Lance Rod Finlay. I'm an electrician by trade and run a small electrical contracting business. The day I was born, um, my dad always talked about building a bigger boat, a newer boat. He'd build our first boat, the original Murray Finn, in the front yard in Bradbury. Oh, Murray Finn's our family vessel. It's owned by uh, um, mum, dad and brother and myself. We built it back and launched it in 2001. We built it from scratch in our family home at Bargo. Always talk about building a bigger boat and my brother's a, a, a bit of a freak and he started drawing boats from the age of you know, 10, 12 and by the time he got to about uh, 16, Dad decided he was good enough to design a, a decent boat and he designed it, built a model of it for his year 10 woodwork project and we went from there. I wanted to own a Grady White walk around since I was a little kid when we used to read uh, sport fishing magazine. They always had the back cover and there was always a picture of a beautiful cream coloured trailer boat running along uh, and normally a walk around. The main reason this was a boat for me is it was a um, it's probably a little bit bigger than I was thinking about anticipating buying but it's a, a great break up of space so you've got a cabin that's big enough for um, a couple of adults to sleep in if you did want to spend the night away somewhere if you did want to do an overnight trip somewhere. It's got a huge cockpit space which makes it easy for game fishing. It's trailerable with a normal Ford Ranger being only 2.4 metres wide and just under three tonne fully loaded. Um, so it, it ticked a lot of boxes for me when I started looking and it's they're a goddamn gorgeous looking boat. The walk around for me allowed me to launch and retrieve the boat on my own quite safely. It also meant that if um, I still like going casting for snap, uh, for Australian salmon or, or bonitos, it allowed me to walk up the bow and cast if I was on my own. From a construction point of view, it's a uh, full timber free hull. It's all got all Coosa board, uh, solid fiberglass uh, hull bottom and sides. Um, full internal mould so you get all finished surfaces inside and that, that's sandwiched together with a with a, a foam so it gives it buoyancy as well as makes the hull a fair bit quieter to travel with. It, it feels like a big boat out at sea, it's got a very slow roll moment so it's very comfortable to troll in um, and when you're travelling it also feels like a big boat because it's not uh, a super deep V, it's a modified V so it's not rolling around too much when you're underway. Grady White sell this boat to large areas. It could end up in a freshwater lake in Canada, it could end up in Australia. So um, I, I changed the prop to a four bladed prop to suit the offshore fishing I was doing at the time. So at the moment she's averaging about uh, 1.6 to 1.5 litres a nautical mile. That's travelling and trolling. Um, and it also brought my cruise revs down to about three. It's very rare that I'm cruising above three and a half thousand RPM. Three and a half thousand RPM, we're doing anywhere from 22 to 25 knots and, and, and burning about one and a half litres of nautical mile. I, it holds enough fuel that I could quite comfortably go marlin fishing for two days in a row without having to refuel. So I could do a two day fishing tournament and not have to refuel on the Saturday night and not interrupt the, the beer drinking festivities that are gathering in sure. Or, uh, or if I wanted to stay away in Jervis Bay or go up the river, I don't have to worry about refueling. The way this boat's designed, obviously, it's a, a pretty versatile boat. Um, uh, without the bait board there, you would feel it, uh, a little bit unsecure at sea because it's quite low at the transom. So I, I built the bait board so we could run with the live bait tank lid open. Um, and, and a lot of the time, like today, we can fish with it open all day. Uh, this come from uh, Short Marine. I dealt with Ryan Short. Um, boat took about three odd months to get delivered, come off the ship all wrapped in plastic and uh, the boys did a fantastic job helping us fit it out, designing the bait board etc was all was all top notch. We've got two NSS's, Evo 3's, we've got a NSS 9 and a 12 inch, um, they're paired to an S5100 sonar module and that's connected to a B275LHW transducer. I like to use the 12 inch screen as my sounder, mainly to the taller screen gives me a lot better definition of water column so I can see bait at better detail when I'm out in deeper water. They can see the kill slick here. I like to use my 9 inch as the chart plotter 
um, and my 12 as a sounder. I, I normally, I, sp I, I move the split screening um, to give myself a larger portion of um, history view of my high frequency and a little bit smaller low frequency because mainly I'm looking for the, the, the fish I'm looking for are on the high and I'm only tracking the bottom detail on the low. Yeah, so today we got the first chance to use the CMAP reveal charts. Um, been a long while since I spent any time fishing around Long Reef and the, the added detail today definitely helps uh, with the contour lines and, and tracking the area we wanted to fish. I, I, I historically knew the place, but being able to see it perfectly on the chart definitely helps. I bought my first Shimano Tiagra 50 wide when I was, I think 14, 13 or 14. Doing my toilet cleaning job, a really glamorous job back in the day. It cost me $825 and I bought it from Tim Simpson at uh, Complete Angler in the city. The Talek is uh, something we just started using this season after sort of seeing uh, Mike Benici and a few other successful fishermen using them. Uh, the Talek has got a great drag cam for bait fishing so it allows us to feed a bait to a marlin uh, in a lot more controlled manner. They're also great from a storage point of view, um, being a lot smaller reel, a lot, lot smaller footprint, you can store more of them in the boat. Started last season with two Talekers, now we've got six. And the reason we want six outfits is when we're fishing a tournament um, and it's tag and release, we like to push the line quite hard and we need a few spare outfits in the, in the kit bag. So um, if we catch a fish and we have to apply a lot of drag to catch the fish quickly, because everything has to happen fast in a tournament, because uh, you've got to maximise your bite time, um, we pack that rod away and then that night we re-top shot it with line. The, the Talica setups with the braid backing and only a short amount of mono means that it's nothing for us to, to re-spool and put a new mono section of line on at yeah, night time. Yeah, it's better without yeah. a big gap on. Oi, 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 you I think that's my lure. My brother and I have sort of started using a couple of different wind-on systems. Um, well, when we're bait fishing, we've got quite a short front leader, so rather than have a standard wind-on, we've actually started doubling up the mono uh, of, a, of a heavier line and that just gives us a, um, an IGFA legal part of the line that we can grab without having to splice Dacron and whip and have the problem of potentially the wind on failing. Uh, yellow fin spread normally looks like a, um, a Brad J coloured bullet, some sort of marlin, other style marlin lure, a, a, a cut face, sort of an evil or a green. And then I like to run a couple of subsurface lures, either a Laser Pro or a Profigi, one of Sundal Benson's fantastic creations. The Yellowfin day, that the fishing had been quite consistent off Sydney for a long period of time. Um, and there was definitely two portions of fish. There was um, smaller fish in the fast moving hot water and there was a temperature break outside that in the deep water where there was less fish, but more quality trophy style fish. Um, we managed to get a bite out of a good one and, and a bit of tackle failure with a split ring let go. Uh, so I'm just telling him about how on the Simrad we can rename our... Whoa! Oh, it's come off! <laughs> oh, we just had a bite on the Laser Pro. It's taken 20, 30 metres of line and fell off which happens in fishing, unfortunately. The hooks didn't find their mark. So we'll, um, we'll do another lap around here and hopefully get another go. Um, cost us that. We, we retrieved the lure to find one of the hooks missing. That, that hook and the back hook in its mouth, and it's worked its jaw to open it up. A decent sized fish to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the second split ring tested at over 50 kilos uh, at the end of the day, which sort of proves you can never cover all bases. And we got lucky on the way in when the captain boys had all fallen asleep and I was enjoying a beer and the nice cruise in. Um, we got rudely interrupted with a triple header of uh, small yellow fins and, and, and managed to land two of those. <laughs> two, two from three school fish after losing a bigger one. Uh, Dinner for Jack's mum. Yes. What did you catch it on? Uh, one on a Laser Pro and one on a uh, Pro Fiji. My, my main tip is find a group of guys that are all interested in it. So you're spreading your, uh, your, your effort and you're searching amongst a bunch of people rather than going one out. Um, 
Today we had two other boats on the water that were, were looking offshore and, and if they'd found them they could have put us, us on the fish and vice versa. The other day we fished we, we were working with a number of boats, uh, tracking the sea surface temperatures. I use personally use rip charts. I like to look for a temperature break of around one, one and a half degrees and if I know that's got fish on it I'll, I'll track that all the way down the coast if possible. So when I first got this Grady, the first day we encountered the tunas, we ran out of Sydney and we ran sort of due east to Sydney. The next day we ran southeast to Sydney. The next day we fished out of Port Kembla. The day after that we fished Jarvis Bay and that was all to keep following that same edge of water that had the fish in it. Uh, the, the kingy fishing out there was slow. We only saw one hooked from one other boat. Then we decided to push out and put a couple of male lures out for a brief period and look for some bait on the shelf where it's easier to catch. We got a string of slimy mackerels out there and then uh, with the short time frame we had to get back for the afternoon photo shoot, we repositioned and managed to catch a few kingfish at Longreef.